All right, well, we've made it up to Glacier National Park. Oh, look at that scenery out there. You'll see a little bit more of that scenery coming up. So I'm gonna go over, um, I hit like the first week, actually it looks like the second week after the reservations are no longer required for um, uh, Rising of the Sun Road. So, or what is it, going to the Sun Road, my apologies. And so I'm kind of here right after that, but it's really before snow. And uh, so we should have a, a pretty good trip. It is getting a little bit busy and it is a Monday and it is only like, it's probably 1030 right now. Um, just because I was planning to get here a lot earlier, but a lot of road construction, a lot of road construction delayed me over a half hour. Um, went to the visitor center, uh, talked to a ranger, got a few ideas on some hikes and things we're going to do. And, um, you know, there's so much to this park. This is another huge one. Uh, so we're just going to get a small taste of the park today as I drive over this road and then just kind of go out the bottom of the, uh, the backside and we'll hit a few hikes and things along the way and stop for some beautiful scenery in Glacier. Glacier is one of the parks that I've anticipated hitting for a long time. I lived not too far away from it, down south in Wyoming for a period of time, and while I got a chance to explore some of the national parks in that general area, I've never made it my way up into this part of Montana. Now, I've driven across the Montana Plains a few times, and some people question, you know, what's the most beautiful state, and many will say Montana. Uh, I'll save my opinions on that for another day but suffice it to say if you're going through glacier you're getting to see the best of the best that this state has to offer amazing mountains mountain passes streams so clear you just want to dip in your hands and drink right from the water giant cedar trees forests amazing things that we're going to see in the upcoming video For the first big hike, we are uh, stopped at Sun Point. Nice big picnic and parking area. And uh, we are walking out to Bering Falls, which is less than a mile hike out one way. And there's a little more falls a little bit further. Let me get to the Bering Falls and I'll see if I want to go further than that. But uh, it's a beautiful day for the park. It's a little bit misty. And rainy and that actually is good because it's gonna drive more people to not stop as much yes and I don't mind a few raindrops beautiful scenery though you guys see what I'm seeing guys This trail out to Bering Falls just leads us right along this lake path. Uh, I think this is St. Mary's Lake, I think. It's the first lake in. We're only about uh, six or seven miles into the 50 mile trek across the park. It is just stunningly beautiful. But we're gonna get back and uh, jump in the van and drive a little bit further down the road. I want to stop here for a moment and just talk about how mountains impact the weather. You might have heard, you know, 
mountains interfere with weather forecasting. Well, this is why, and it's rare to be able to see an example, just because it's a cloudy and overcast day, but the clouds are coming in from the west and hitting the mountain, and the mountain is driving them up. And you can see how it gets to the edge of the mountain and it's forcing itself down. And that's also creating this little pocket of snow over there, uh, which is happening because this is in a spot where the sun doesn't get. So it's very possible that snow has been there like forever. It's possibly perma-snow. But you can kind of see how the clouds hit the mountain, the mountains drive the clouds up, and then they get stuck on the backside. And that is how mountains interfere with the weather. So right now I'm hiking on some of the Loop Trail. And uh, this is a neat little spot in the forest because it probably had a forest fire, I'd say maybe 10 or 20 years ago, uh, based on the, all the dead pine. These are all type of pine trees that are burnt. And then we see some young pines that survived the fire. And then we see a lot of deciduous trees coming up as well. So this is really a sign of an old forest fire that is really starting to recover. So beautiful canyons out here. We have a nice little waterfall and then the glacier mountains are over behind me there. So this is just a totally awesome little hike. And uh, I did out about, maybe it's a little less than a mile out to the sign back there. And uh, I'm gonna hike back and there's a few more hikes that I wanna have a look at uh, if I can. We just experienced a vegetative shift, which is caused by altitude. We went from a mostly coniferous forest down to a mostly boreal forest. And that is a sign that we are dropping and we have indeed been dropping elevation quite a bit. Uh, so this is uh, the halfway down the mountain and uh, shifting, uh, shifting what we see. down here at Red Rock and uh, the water here is so clear you can see all the way to the bottom and it's about 10 or 15 feet deep by my the looks of it really cool crystal clear blue water nothing is growing in this it's probably clean enough to drink So we're on the trail of cedars here. This is one of the few uh, fully accessible trails. It's about a 0.8 mile loop. And if I read correctly, it should be boardwalk all or at least most of the way. So this would be a really good one to get out to if you're uh, having some mobility issues. It's gonna be on the west side, really before you go up the mountains. Uh, so we've already been up and down the glaciers. And now we just get a beautiful cedary viewpoint. Look at that. It's awesome. So we're over here on the cedar trail and I was having a conversation with some people over here about uh, the different plants. And um, so the trail has a lot of different things from hemlock. We've talked about hemlock. This is Western hemlock. A uh, good tree, very nice, distinct. But the other thing is here very closely in appearance is the yew tree down here. Both of them are gonna have white stripes on the bottom. Of course, the yew is toxic, the hemlock is not. So, you know, I chewed a little bit of the yew just to see which one it was because I wasn't as familiar with the eastern versus western. Eh, oh well. If I call over and die, it's just poison from yew, but that's okay. Obviously, the other thing in here are the cedar trees, like this guy here. Totally awesome.
We are halfway through the Cedar Trail loop now. It is not boardwalk the whole way, but it is very accessible. It is a, I think it's, it's paved with dirt. Very flat, very smooth, and I'm already back almost to the parking lot. And I, just, I gotta say, this is an amazing trail. I gotta go on it, it's just beautiful. Nice gorge in the middle too. What is it with me and finding snakes? But at least I don't believe this one's poisonous. <laughs> I don't know what he is, though. No rattle on that tail. I don't want to get too close to him either, but... Um, hey, at least it's not a diamondback rattlesnake that's rattling at me, right? That's a good sign. Alright, we're going to back up from him. Let him go. By now, we've been up and down the glacier, and we've hiked through some forests, across some creek beds, and just took in some amazing scenes. As I said, we have only scratched the surface of this amazing park, so you got to come check it out. We're going to leave here today and uh, head on over into the Cascades coming up here in the next few weeks. With that, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Hit that notification bell, and we will see you a little bit further down the road.